Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm really happy to see everyone back for another video. So we learned a lot this far when we talk about Linux, right? We're on our Linux journey. There's a lot of things we covered. And in our last video, we talked all about the file system hierarchy. We touched a little bit about how we can look at it using a command. And specifically, we used a tree command in order to do that. I also showed you how to access the file system hierarchy man pages. So that way you can read about the importance of these directories and why they're so necessary. We also did a little bit of poking inside of those directories. So you should feel comfortable navigating the file system hierarchy. So if you still don't feel comfortable or you have no idea what I'm talking about, make sure you check out the links in the description as I will link that video and you can go ahead and watch it and then you can come back to this one. Now for today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about relative path and absolute path. What does that even mean? Why is it important? And we're gonna apply that not only to directories, but also as well files. This is another important concept to help you navigate or work with files when you're using Linux. But before we dive into that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So that way you are notified whenever we upload videos to the channel. If these videos are helping you out and you're getting value out of them, make sure you go ahead and give me a like. Also, kickstart somebody else's tech journey or maybe help them out in their tech journey and share the video with them. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. So with the housekeeping out of the way, let's jump into today's video. So welcome everybody to my RHEL 8 desktop where we're gonna go over today's topics. And remember, we're gonna touch on three commands, some of which you may have seen before, some you may not. And once we understand how to use those commands, we're gonna talk a little bit about what does relative and absolute path means and how that applies towards directories and files. And we're also gonna play a little bit with navigation. How do you navigate around? So let's jump right into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our terminal and by now you should be very comfortable in how to open up the terminal. So we're gonna go over to activities and we find our terminal right over here. So let's make this a little bigger for folks. So the first command that we're gonna go over today is called PWD. And we talked about this before in prior videos, but PWD stands for Print Working Directory. And if we go into our man pages, and you should know how to use your man pages by now, we go man PWD, you can see here it says print name of current slash working directory. And you can obviously go in here to read more of the description and what are some of the options that you can give it. So let's exit out of that. And so let's just type in PWD. And here is our working directory, meaning where we are right now in order to work. And so interestingly enough, slash home slash El Acosta, that is our path in order to get to our home directory. And the way the terminal is configured right now, you actually get your working directory in this last part over here of the terminal. That squiggly is actually representative of our home directory. And I'll point it out to you in the future when we change our directory, that you'll see that squiggly line change for our working directory as we move along the directory structure. So now that we know what the working directory is, meaning the directory in which we are working out of right now, how do we go about looking what's inside of the directory? And this command actually I've taught to you before, and it's called the ls command or the list command. So let's take a quick look at the man page to see the ls command. So man ls. And as you can see here, it says list directory contents. And of course, there's a lot of options that you can give it in order to give you more information about the contents of a directory. So I'll leave that up to you in order to read. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. And let's just run the command real quick to take a look at what's inside of our home directory. So if I do ls, you can see here that I have some directories. Uh, I have some files. And remember, in our last video, we created the three files, which was the .pdf, the .sh, and the .dot. TXT. So now that you know how to list the contents of a directory, so that way you can peek at what's inside of it. The next question is, how do I start to navigate this file system hierarchy? And if you don't know what a file system hierarchy is, go ahead and watch our previous video in which we break that down. I'll leave a link in the description. As an example, in our previous video, we took a look at the file system hierarchy. I'll bring it up again so that way we can look at it as a reference so we can learn how to navigate the file system hierarchy. And remember, we use a tree command for that. So tree, show me only directories, and I'm interested in one level for now, and show me starting from the root directory. And we're gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger, so that way we can see our previous commands. All right, awesome. So as you can see here, we have our root directory, which is the topmost directory. Then after that, we have our home directory, 
And we can see that by our root directory over here. Then we have our home directory, which is right here. And then El Acosta comes after this home directory here. I should expect something under home to see El Acosta. But how do we go about doing that? We can actually just modify the tree command again and show me two levels down instead of one. And it gives you further information into the directories inside of each directory in the first level. So as a reminder, we were interested in the home directory. So let's scroll to where we see the home. And here it is. And remember, there's a lot of output. But as you can see here, the root directory starts up here. Then we follow it by home. And then we follow it by El Acosta. So that gives you an idea of the file system hierarchy. Now, what if I just want to see one level below the home directory? And I'm not really interested in what's inside of var, users, and some of these other directories that you see here on the first level. We can adjust the tree command to go one directory below slash root slash home. And as you can see, it shows you that you have the root directory followed by home. And then under home, you have the directory El Acosta. If we do a PWD, we can see that, of course, our working directory is our home directory in which we are in right now. So now with that example out of the way, the next question you might ask yourself is, how do we navigate the file system hierarchy? And we do that by using the CD command or change directory. So let's take a look real quick at the man page for CD. So if we type man one P CD, this is the command that will actually get you the man page for CD. And as you can see here, it says change the working directory. And of course, there's a description here. You can go ahead and read the description and there's other options that you can give it, but I'll give you the opportunity to go ahead and read through this man page as I won't cover it in details in this video. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. So now that you know that CD means change directory, let's navigate the file hierarchy system using CD. So as you can see here, we are in the El Acosta directory. And we know that for a fact because we use PWD. So now the question is, how do we get to home? There's two ways in which you can actually do this. The first way is we can do CD dot dot, and that's two dots. So if we hit enter on that, now we do a PWD and we see that we went up a directory. So we're no longer in the El Acosta directory under home. We are now in home. And again, remember earlier when I said that this section over here shows you your current directory. As you can see in the example, home is our current working directory. And this is an example of what's called a relative path. We change the directory relative to where we were before. So to recap, we were in the El Acosta directory. We did CD space dot dot in order to change the directory to home and dot dot is a relative path, meaning relative to where we were, we went up one directory. Now, what if we wanted to go back to the El Acosta? Well, now we're in the home directory. So relative to where we are, we do a CD and we just type in El Acosta because that's the next directory under. We can do a PWD again and we see that we're in the El Acosta directory. So that's a great way to navigate up and down the file system hierarchy using a relative path. Now, another interesting question when you're using relative path is, can you start navigating more than one directory level? And of course the answer is yes. In this case, let's say I'm in El Acosta under our home directory, which we are, and I wanted to go to the root directory. And if we look at our tree, the root directory is two levels up. One level would be the home directory. The next level would be the root directory. So let's go ahead and relative to where we are, we can do a CD dot dot. And then in this case, now we use the directory separator, which is a slash. And then we put another two dots to signify two levels, two dots for one, another two dots for the second. So let's hit enter on that and let's do a print working directory. And as you can see here, we're in slash or root. And this is how you navigate the file system hierarchy using a relative path. So now that we know how to navigate the file system hierarchy using relative path, the other way that you can navigate the file system hierarchy is by using what's called an absolute path. An absolute path is basically giving the whole entire path to get to the directory of where you're trying to go. So as an example, we are in the root directory right now as we see. So what happens if I wanna go back to the El Acosta directory that's sitting under home? Well, we can give it an absolute path and we can say cd change directory space and we say root and then we say home and then we can say el acosta and as we can see here by print working directory we see that we're back in the el acosta directory and we used 
a full path. Now let's do one more example. If I were to bring up the file system hierarchy using tree command and I'm interested in just the directories and we're going to go one level below the root directory. Let's say now I'm interested in going into the op directory or OPT. So we can do that by using the absolute path and we do CD slash for root OPT and we do a print working directory by PWD and we can see that we gave it the absolute path which is slash OPT. Now earlier when I showed you the relative path and we were navigating multiple directory levels, right? So we did two earlier. You can do the same thing over here as well with an absolute path, it's no different. So as an example, let's take a look at our tree again and let's say we're interested in going two levels under home and we see here now that we have home el acosta would be the first level and then documents desktop music so on and so forth these are all my second level so let's say i'm interested in looking at my documents this is where i can do an absolute path and travel multiple levels up or down just like the relative but i can give it a full path to get myself there so in this case if i'm interested in going into documents i do a cd for change directory i'm going to go root followed by home followed by my username, El Acosta, and followed by documents. Now let's head back to the home directory. And remember, our home directory is our username. So in my case, it's El Acosta. So we are in the documents, and that's basically going up one directory level. I can basically do a CD dot dot, and that will get me up one level. Another example is I can do CD home El Acosta, that will get me there as well. Either way works, and that's the beauty of Linux. So let's take a look at inside the directory. Just like before, we see those files that we created from the previous videos. Now here's the interesting thing. You learned about what a relative path is, and you also learned about what an absolute path is. It also not only applies to directories, but it also applies to files. Now let's take a look at an example of how relative path and absolute path can also apply to files. So let's bring up our tree again. So with one level below home, we now see that we have slash for the root, then we have home, and then we have El Acosta. Let's go into that directory. So what we can do from here is we can do CD and we can go El Acosta, and then we can do an LS and we see the files that are in there. Another thing that you can do with listing the contents, and we could take a step back if we were to go up another level, you could have actually listed the contents of El Acosta relative to where we are. So for example, we are in the home directory and you see that the next directory under would be El Acosta. So I actually could have just typed LS El Acosta and it would have given me the same exact results because you are actually telling, hey, list me the contents of this directory relative to where we are. So it's another example of how you can do that. Now back to the example before of how we can see if a file exists by using either a relative path or an absolute path. So now we're in the home directory and I showed you how to list the contents of a directory relative to where we are. It's no different when it comes to seeing if a file exists relative to where we are. So as an example, I'm interested in looking at lewis.pdf. So if I were to do an LS and we are interested in looking at the El Acosta directory, because remember we are in home, and then we're looking for lewis.pdf. And as you can see here, it returns the path relative to where we are and the file name, letting us know that the file is there, of course. Now, what does it look like if the file wasn't there? Well, let's type in the same command, but I'm gonna just say, instead of PDF, I'll put PDF2. And you can see here that LS says, cannot access El Acosta slash Lewis.pdf2. No such file or directory exists. Now let's go to the root directory. Now let's say I'm interested in finding that same exact file, except I'm going to give it the absolute path now. So I will say LS space, and remember the absolute path is slash for the root. Next would be the home. Then after that would be El Acosta. And then after that, it'll be lewis.pdf. So let's go ahead and type that in. So slash home slash El Acosta slash lewis.pdf. And as you can see, it returned the absolute path for us because that file actually does exist. And again, as an example, we can do two to show us a file that doesn't exist and it'll show us, hey, even using this absolute path, there's no such file or directory that exists. And that is an example of how you can apply relative path and absolute path 
to files. Your assignment is to go into each one of these directories, go inside bin, go inside boot, go inside dev, go inside Etsy, and list the contents, do an LS. Take a look at what's inside. What do these files mean? Get yourself out of Etsy. Go into another directory. How do we do that from here? It is your job to start playing around now. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below and we'll be sure to answer them as soon as we get to them. Also too, let me know in the comments if this made sense for you all. Is there anything in particular that didn't make sense? Let me know in the comments. So welcome back everyone. By now you should have a good understanding of what an absolute path is, what a relative path is, and how you could apply it both to files and also directories. Now make sure that as you're going along and watching these videos, you're also practicing them in your Linux environment. And I showed you all how to virtualize that Linux environment, whether you're on Intel-based Macs or whether you're on Windows. And again, I'll put links in the description if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. So I'm curious, did you guys understand the topics for today? Do you have any questions on it? If so, leave me a question in the comment section below or just let me know that I'm doing a great job as well. You can also leave me a comment in the comment section. Now, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue on our Linux journey because our next video is gonna be all about creating, moving, deleting, copying files and directories. And you certainly don't wanna miss that. And if you're getting any value out of the videos and they're helping you out a lot, make sure you give me a like for the video. And lastly, share the video with a family member or friend so you can kick off their tech journey or even help them if they're currently in tech. So I look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.